Hey guys and welcome back to The Average. Also welcome if you're new here, I'm getting a steady stream of new followers so thanks for joining us guys and becoming an Averager. I know it sounds very appealing, we're all very used to it so we're gonna get over and breeze on past it. I am making another paper craft thing today. If you haven't seen the previous one then go check it out because that is where I started this project well not started this project but started doing these sort of paper crafts I wanted to try it just to have a go at it and then I kind of fell in love with it because it was super fun and interesting and cathartic to just do and working with layers was really enjoyable so I wanted to try that again but this time I totally gave myself a challenge because I did an underwater scene and I thought you know what this is gonna be great I love underwater stuff I love drawing fish I'm gonna have a really good time it took ages it took a long time so this video is quite long for that reason because I had a lot to edit and I didn't want to edit too much out because the whole process you know that's the point um, of doing it is so you guys can see it so I started working on this by sketching out a little image in my sketchbook just a thumbnail of the kind of thing that I wanted to create so I wanted a lot of depth in this piece because obviously the ocean has a lot of depth so I wanted to have like a layer of rocks fish different things that I could think of that you will see coming up in the piece and Yes, it was great. It was fun. It just took a long time, I think, because I thought I'm gonna make each piece really detailed. For instance, I started out drawing these fish and I think this took me like a couple of hours to do just this layer. And even though I really like drawing these fish um, and the process of it using watercolours, it took a long time, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna keep repeating that this took a long time. I think you can sense the pain in my voice of why, why did I decide to do such a long project when I have a lot of other work to do? Yeah, no, no solution, no knowns, no knowns, brain not working, brain not found, cannot compute, goodbye. Bye everyone, enjoy, enjoy the w watching the video without my voiceover. I'm just kidding of course, I just don't know what to say. I'm drawing some fish here and I decided on this piece that I was going to use watercolours so I went ahead with that and at some point in the process I started to use gouache because it being so opaque so it could just cover up any mistakes that I made. I was listening to podcasts whilst working on this piece. First of all I listened to the Three Point Perspective where they talk a lot about art subjects and different things and they spoke about awkward art moments that they had been through, just like cringeworthy stories so I thought that I would share a cringeworthy story as well. Back when I was a graphic designer there was this um, promotion on where they, we were promoting this game and it had um, this leprechaun guy as you know the main the main character of the game so I put him next to kind of like a pot of gold and stuff which were the assets from the game I wasn't just being like su super uh, <laughs> stereotypical but yeah it, it was the assets for the game so I placed him in front of this pot of gold so it had like gold it was like had gold handles sticking out and basically it looked a little bit phallic so I sent this off for approval not realizing because you know when you're stuck in a piece and you don't even look you can't even see something and then other people are like I can't believe you did that that's hilarious and then somebody was like oh you should just keep that and I was like ha 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 I should just keep that yeah like as a joke and then my manager was like what you were planning to keep that in and like put it up live on the website and I was like no it was a joke I'm like no I wasn't <laughs> it was so awkward and I was just like oh no he thinks I'm so unprofessional now I just thinks I was gonna put that in a website banner. Anyway that was my sort of cringe story and I sometimes think about that but it doesn't make me like feel that bad I just kind of find it funny now. At the time I was like I want the ground to swallow me whole and yeah I don't know if anybody else has any cringe stories I thought they were pretty amusing to listen to. I'll link the podcast down below. Obviously theirs are a little bit more like career affecting and bad things happening because they are all they were freelance illustrators, I don't know if they are now, but yeah, they're all very successful, so go check that out because it's they've got a lot of interesting tips and stuff as well, so interesting to listen to whilst working because they've pulled me through a couple of um, 
long long projects throughout the day and I was looking at different podcasts and I came across another one because I finished the three point perspective one so I came across another one called Law and it's basically about where theory of where some horror stories or like uh, myths and legends come from originally and the guy like goes through stories about different things and then has a conclusion on if maybe they're real or not and it's very a spooky one guys and I like it it's really interesting and there's a lot of really good stories in there which I think I listened to about 14 episodes of it all of them are about 15 to 20 minutes long so that gives you an indication of how long this project was taking so I suggest listening to podcasts if you're working um I think a lot of people think oh I should just sit in silence and do my work but I I know that if I do that I mean I do that sometimes if I'm coming up with ideas or I listen to music if I'm in the thinking stages of things but if I'm just doing something monotonous and painting bubbles over and over all these fish over and over again then I know I kind of want to zone out and listen to something to keep me a bit entertained and I think that really helps to keep me motivated and um, recently my boyfriend Chris he hadn't really been listening to stuff whilst working so we were both watching The Office or listening to it as we worked side by side on different art projects and I think it really helped push him through like doing it again. I don't know if I'm just speaking for him absolute bollocks but yeah I hope I'm not because <laughs> I know that it helps motivate me to just keep going. Although there's the other side of it now if I watch anything I need to be doing something else with my hands like I need to be either playing a game on my iPad or drawing or I know it's not technically a bad thing if I'm drawing but it's all the time like I can't just sit and watch something I get a bit bored now so I always have to do something in the background but yeah it's a good motivator so suggest so that if you haven't tried that out guys I don't know why you wouldn't have maybe you're just like yeah stuff that's pretty obvious why are you saying this to us I'm gonna say it anyway because you know I wanted to talk about what podcasts I was listening to I'm trying to find some other good ones if anybody has any good ones then please suggest because yes I'm always in search of something to keep me going these uh, lore podcasts about horror stories and stuff really got me inspired to try and write my own horror story or a horror comic I've always wanted to do a horror comic but I think I was just too um, intimidated by the idea of doing that kind of subject because horror can go one way it can be really just awful and cheesy or it can be really creepy and I obviously want to do creepy but I think that's a really hard thing to achieve for sure. Maybe I'll do a little horror horror paper cutout thing because I am addicted to them now. I'm definitely going to do more of these paper cutouts. I've just been working on these fish so what I did was like a layer of fish and then I thought what I do to show the movement of them like swirling upwards I was going to do another layer behind and I realised later, I mean now I realise that I put a layer in between these fish and it doesn't really make sense perspective wise because the fish are still, like on this layer, the fish are still kind of the same size as the layer before and if there's a layer in between them then they should be much smaller and maybe a bit blurred but yeah never mind, <laughs> I only realised this after gluing everything down and I was like hmm Maybe I should have put that layer in front of this layer. I hope that makes sense to anybody. I realised that I was just kind of saying words at you and it probably didn't make much sense because you haven't seen what I mean yet. The best part of these um, paper cutout things is putting everything together and lining stuff up. I find that really fun and a couple of times here I kind of winged it. I was like yeah it'll fit and I just painted it out and then I realised hmm probably need to do a bit more paint down there or make it look better that way and I had to sort of um, twist and turn the papers so like things would lock into each other and work so I kind of let myself down on the composition slightly in that sense like I said there was a mistake of the fish they should have been smaller on that layer but I don't know I still really liked it the final outcome and I thought this was really fun to do. I really like doing the details of the rocks and stuff. I had a different painting that I've done before of an underwater scene and it's somewhere on my channel I think and um, I'll try and find it and link it below. But yeah it's um, it was an underwater scene about from this book How My Light Is Spent. Uh, anyway in the story there's this scene where this blind girl she reads um, this braille book of a, hun a thousand leagues under the sea is it 100,000 or 1,000 leagues? Oh no. Okay, never mind. Anyway, she reads that and she's... 
I just imagined her because it speaks about her going in the bathtub a lot and her imagining herself underwater so in that video I drew that out like she was in the bath but imagining that she was in the sea around her and that was really fun to do so I had that off screen to the side as a sort of reference point because I wanted to come up with something a little bit similar because I thought that worked out really nicely so I wanted to get that feel of depth that I had in that piece over to this piece yeah it was fun I decided that I wanted a sunken ship in this image and I thought oh I'll do you know the classic old wooden ship that you see in like the little mermaid and have like the the big mast coming up and maybe just have it in a, like a dark silhouette but then I saw this sort of modern ship that had sunk and I you know I was I mean I was looking at images for reference and I really liked the way this one looked so I thought you know what let's put a modern ship in there you know why why can't we we can have a little modernism in this piece it doesn't have to be so old-fashioned so I drew this boat out using a small um, fine liner and I think the fine liner is too small because it doesn't really fit like the way that I drew it I like the drawing but I don't think it really fits in with the other the style of the other layers then I go in and I sort of fix stuff up and it kind of fits a little bit better but I still think I should have used like a thicker pen or just painted it with watercolours as I had done with all these other bits and bobs like maybe painted the line work with um, blue as I had with the fish and any other details that I put in this no it worked out it worked out in the end so it's fine whatever also it's supposed to be a little bit in the distance so kind of works and then obviously I wanted a whale in the background and I had never drawn a humpback whale before so this was something that was really fun um, but also quite challenging because I was like this is gonna look terrible and it kind of does look a little bit terrible if you look too closely at it so don't look closely okay just keep your eyes a little bit half closed and squint at it and you can see that it's a beautiful painting okay thank you like and subscribe for more lol yeah I said lol out loud what of it I think here I was just trying to get all the layers together, seeing how they went, and I had this bright idea of um, having a ship at the top, but having it so it looked like it was coming through the water, so as if we were underwater looking up at it. But I also, I don't, I mean, I've been underwater a few times, like by a boat and seen boats underwater, and I didn't look up any reference for this, which was a bit of a regret, because I don't think that looks quite right. Um, but I think I think it works and as well I cut out fishing line I cut out and I can bend and twist to go over the top of some of the layers really really like the way that worked like I I think the thing I like most about the working with the paper pieces is bending stuff and making it look like it's popping out or just adding some visual interest in that sense I think that's really fun and a fun thing to do and I wish I had tried to think of more ways to incorporate this kind of elements into this piece and obviously the perspective of um, the boat and the whale is a bit off because I think the whale is supposed to be further back from the boat so I did it so the boat was popping up out towards us but I didn't do it far enough so it kind of looks like the boat is on top of the whale but the whale's like diving under so it's like how how's that happened and then also there's this fishing line that looks like it's it must be a giant fishing line so I tried to pull it out so it looked like it was heading more towards us if you can get my meaning instead of going down so it's this massive long thing it's it's coming up towards us um, through the ocean that probably doesn't make any sense but meh looking at it if you can probably rip it apart a little bit perspective wise you could probably be like that doesn't make sense like why is the ship as big as that or why is that one smaller I think that's probably down to lack of planning and just going ahead with having fun with this so now I'm just sticking all the layers down and I had a struggle with this one um, because the previous paper cutout thing I did it kind of all worked out it just stuck together and it was fine but this one I had a bit of a struggle I was like why is it not sticking and it kept coming off and I was getting a little bit frustrated because I just wanted it to be done and yeah I, and as well like this is supposed to be the fun part so when it's not working out 
I mean, not the fun part, but like the most enjoyable part of seeing it all come together and then it's not working out, like it's not sticking down. I was getting really like, just stick. It was fine though. I think it was, <laughs> I always outrageously exaggerate everything of negativity. I'm like, yes, it was the worst time ever, but it wasn't, it was fine. It took like five minutes more. I don't know why I just exaggerate so much. I went back in with a Posca pen just adding details and bubbles and stuff because I think I wasn't really pleased with the way the top layer worked out with the boat. There's parts of it I really like but I think I wish I just dedicated a bit more time to it. I think because I had dedicated so much time to the bottom layers I was really just a bit tired. Which is not a very good excuse I know but it's my reason. So yeah, I just went back in with the Poscas, adding a little bit more detail here and there, bringing the illustration um, together as one piece instead of just separate layers of stuff stuck together. Went over details of the whale and the fishing line and adding bubbles and things. I don't know why, just going over with Posca pens is so satisfying. I think because I recently discovered them like this year and I remember the first time painting something and then going over it Posca's I was like oh my god this is so opaque it's amazing here I wasn't sure if I wanted like a yellow beam of light because I know I wanted beams of light coming down through the ocean like rays of light so I used my old friend tracing paper and I think it really really pulled everything together it really worked out I kind of wish that there was like a white border around this piece but there isn't um, that would have been like quite cool. So maybe if I can find a box frame that is like a white frame, I think that would look really nice. So here's the final thing guys, lots of different layers, probably not cohesively going that well together, but I think overall it worked out. I really like, again, with these pieces being able to kind of go into the painting and look at the different levels and turn my head this way and that and see a sort of different composition each way you look. I highly suggest having a go at paper art if you haven't had a go and please let me know what you guys think about this piece. Do you prefer it to my last one which was a spooky scene in case you haven't seen it. So yeah that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more and I will see you next time. Bye!